The result is that American policy on the Gaza war now appears hapless, ineffective, and immoral. The image of U.S. officials wringing their hands about civilian casualties while providing ever more weapons is grotesque. The image of a president of the United States mumbling words like indiscriminate and over the top to describe Israel's bombings suggests weakness and passivity. Part of the problem is that in trusting the Israeli government, Biden is trusting Bibi Netanyahu, an exceptionally clever politician who knows how to handle American presidents expertly and has done so for decades. This time, Bibi has outsmarted, outmaneuvered, and outplayed Biden. You just listened to part of Fareed Zakaria's scathing rebuke of the Biden administration's support for Israel. And that clip that you just watched is the main point that he made after a lengthy explanation about how Israel has defied the United States at every step of the way. Now, Fareed Zakaria saying this is really important because Biden actually listens to and respects Fareed. In an Axios article about Biden's obsession with Morning Joe, we also learned that Fareed Zakaria's Sunday show on CNN is Biden's second favorite show because quote biden has quoted from zakaria's show at length according to a person who has heard his comments biden also sat for an interview with zakaria last year aides say biden respects these voices on cable tv and loves when they applaud his actions so to have someone with the ear of the president bluntly say that his support for israel is immoral and that weapons need to be cut off immediately that matters. And furthermore, Biden, like Trump, has a very, very large ego. So if he hears from someone he respects that he looks weak, that could hopefully get him to rethink his stance towards Israel. Now, before Fareed reached that conclusion that we saw, he made a really strong case as to why Biden's policy on Israel has been a complete and utter failure. Let's watch. When Hamas launched its gruesome terror attack on Israel on October 7th of last year, President Biden made a decision based on conviction and calculation. He announced his complete solidarity with the country. Biden must have calculated that the only way to have any influence on Israel would be to hug it close, show real empathy, send it the arms it needed, and thus earn Israel's trust to shape its response. It was a thought through strategy, but it has failed almost completely. From the start, the administration urged the Israelis to consider proportionality in their response to Hamas. Israel heard it and went ahead with one of the most extensive bombing campaigns in this century against a population of about 2.2 million people that by Israel's own estimates contained about 30,000 Hamas militants. By one January estimate, more than half of buildings across Gaza have been damaged or destroyed. The administration counseled Israel against a large ground invasion of Gaza, advising it to take a narrower, targeted approach aimed at eliminating Hamas militants and infrastructure. The Israeli government had lots of long meetings with U.S. officials and then again went ahead with the ground invasion. The Biden team urged a humanitarian pause, but only got a brief one when it was able to get the government of Qatar to broker a hostage exchange. After initial operations wound up, American officials told Israeli officials that what was done in the north of Gaza could not be done to the south. Yet, after telling people to move to the south to get out of harm's way, Israel then proceeded to bomb the south in a manner that President Biden himself admitted is indiscriminate. The U.S. has repeatedly pressured Israel to make greater efforts to protect innocent civilians, but to little avail. Now it has been counseling against an invasion of Rafah, the city nestled close to Egypt, where over a million Palestinians have huddled together. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has promised to invade Rafah, whether another hostage deal is made or not. Washington has warned that after the war, there should be no Israeli seizure of land in Gaza and no new Israeli occupation of the territory. The Israeli government's plans are to do both. The result is that American policy on the Gaza war now appears hapless, ineffective, and immoral. That framing there is really important, not for us, but for Biden specifically. Fareed is sympathizing with Biden and frames his initial stance towards Israel as strategic in order to 
persuade them. But I mean, as time went on, it's undeniable that that approach has failed. And this is someone that Biden respects telling him to grow a spine and basically change policies immediately so you stop looking so weak and foolish. The carrot approach has obviously been a colossal failure. Now it's time for the stick. This isn't some far left extremist saying this. This is Fareed Zakaria on CNN saying this, somebody that Biden respects. And really, Israel is so lucky that someone like Biden is in power currently because cutting off weapons should be the bare minimum. If he actually cared about international law, we would sanction Israel and cut them off from the entire international community immediately. I mean, allowing this illegal rogue behavior to continue lets other countries know that they don't have to respect international rules and norms and they can do what they want so long as they have the support of a really powerful country. It undermines the U.S.'s credibility internationally. It's immoral and it is killing Biden's chances of getting reelected. And he has to wake up and recognize that. Now, another point that Freed went on to make is that the Israelis currently supporting the barbaric policies of their military in Gaza as a result of October 7th are one day going to come to regret this in the same way that Americans came to regret our post 9-11 foreign policy in the Middle East. But Biden, as somebody who is a true friend to Israel, can maybe convince them by going to the Knesset and speaking to them to stop. And in doing so, he can show the world that he still has what it takes to be a leader, which is kind of important now, given the concerns about his mental acuity and lack of energy and overall weakness that he's criticized for. But if he doesn't do that, he'll look like a weak coward who's not only intimidated by Netanyahu, but also intimidated by his own base, who he's literally hiding from right now in order to avoid protests. And I'm not making this up. In an op-ed for The Nation, Jeet here actually pokes fun at Biden because he's basically gone into the political equivalent of the witness protection program in order to hide from his angry base. And this is in response to a report from NBC News where they detail how, quote, President Joe Biden's team is increasingly taking extraordinary steps to minimize disruptions from pro-Palestinian protests at his events by making them smaller, withholding their precise locations from the media and the public until he arrives, avoiding college campuses, and in at least one instance considering hiring a private company to vet attendees. I mean, this is beyond embarrassing. You can't expect to win if you are literally hiding from the people whose votes you'll need in November. Furthermore, this may have stopped disruptions at events at least temporarily, but it hasn't stopped people from protesting him. His his late night appearance, for example, had protesters that were arrested, including actress from Euphoria, Hunter Schaefer. And guess what? That's still a bad look. He's still getting negative headlines because of the protests at his events. They might not be disrupting his events necessarily, and he might feel like the heat has been taken off of him, but it hasn't stopped the protests. And furthermore, it hasn't stopped the disruption of events from other Democrats, including his wife, Jill. Jill what are you that's the kind of people that Biden feels the most comfortable being around right now, aside from his rich donors who host private fundraisers for him. Deranged liberal sycophants who feel emboldened to literally put their hands on a young woman all because she dares to speak out against genocide. Those cultist pigs that we just saw in that video hissing at that young woman and grabbing her, they should feel absolutely ashamed of themselves because they are no different than Trump cultists. They're not. They think that they are, but they're not. They're just as bad. That's their response to somebody saying genocide bad. Shame on all of them. But I mean, none of this has to happen. That's the main point. None of this has to continue happening. Biden can stop doing a genocide. He could stop supporting Israel's genocide and things would probably get better almost immediately. At least the disruptions would stop and he wouldn't have to hide from the public. I mean, either way, though, he's going to have to face these vot voters that he's hiding from. The question is whether or not he's going to face them now or in November. And given the threat that Trump poses, I really hope that he chooses to nut up sooner rather than later, because if he doesn't, we're all fucked. And since he's been ignoring his base, who's told him for months to stop, my hope is that maybe he'll actually listen to Fareed Zakaria. But I mean, we'll have to wait and see. And uh, the administration's tone 
it's at least changed pretty sharply since Michigan's uncommitted vote last week. But we'll have to wait and see if an actual policy change will be accompanied with this shift in tone because actions speak louder than words. And he can say one thing, but if he's continuing to fund and support Israel materially, then what he says doesn't matter. And the protests are uh, they're going to continue and he risks losing if he doesn't actually listen to people like Fareed who are issuing these good faith criticisms telling him you've got to stop right now come on man